We've recently updated the Maze Puzzle Tool, adding the ability to create interactive PDFs for the Kindle Scribe, as well as the ability to save, load, and delete settings, making it easier than ever to create consistent books across your brands. Let's head over to Book Creator and I'll demonstrate how to use this tool. To get to the Maze tool, click on Activity Books, Maze Puzzle Tool, or click on the icon. As with our other tools, you want to start out by setting your book settings. You can select from any of the standard KDP trim sizes, use your own custom size, or use Kindle Scribe, which will create the interactive PDF for you. We're going to go with an 8.5 by 11. Next, you go to Puzzle Settings and set up your mazes. You want to start with how many mazes you're going to have. Let's say we're going to have 100. You can set the puzzle starting numbers. So if you want to combine these mazes into another book or combine different kind of mazes together, you can use this to start numbering on a different number besides one. Then you want to select your maze shape. We have five different shapes, rectangle, diamond, triangle, hexagon, and circle. And each one of these has their own settings. And I'll briefly show that to you, but we're going to have an individual video on each one of these types and go into more depth in, in how to set up each type of maze. For rectangle, you can select an inside shape of rectangle, triangle, or hexagon. Let's just leave it at rectangle. You can set the width and the height of your maze. So we'll leave that at 15 and 20 for now. You can also decide whether to end at the bottom of the maze or have the maze end in the middle. You can set the elitism tendency, which is going to tell you how long your path is going to be through the maze, and your river tendency, which is going to tell you how long the paths to your dead ends are going to tend to be. And there's a detailed explanation of both of these in the overview video, so go look for that. If you want a deeper understanding of how those two work, you can set the line thickness. You can decide whether you want to randomize the openings. If you select yes here, then the software will select the opening and ending spot randomly for every single puzzle in the book. Or you can set them yourself. So I want my first opening to be on the far left and I want my end opening to be on the far right. So I'm gonna put 20 here. Let's go ahead and do a refresh. That's looking pretty good. Let's go over to the titles and word settings page. So you can select your maze title. If you don't want this to say maze, or maybe you want it to say rectangle maze. And now it's going to say rectangle maze one, rectangle maze two, three, four, etc. You can set the font you want. How about we switch that to Meriwether? You can set the font size individually on the puzzle page and the answer page. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. And on our answer page, we have four, so maybe we want to make it a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and do a refresh. That's how that would look. You can also select where you want your title to start. So if you wanted, you could move this down further. I kind of like where it is here, so I'm going to leave that there. The next thing that you can set is the font size for your start and end. Let's leave that at Roboto. You can also set the font size for that. Maybe we want it to be a little bit smaller. And you can set the text used here. Let's say you want to start at the bottom. You can change this to end, change this to start. And now when you do a refresh, you'll see that you have start down here and end up here. So you have complete control over the font you're using for the text and the font size for the text, as well as the actual text itself on the page. You can also set the color settings. If you're creating downloadable printables, for example, you might want to use color. So maybe you want to use a red color for your solution line instead of this gray. And that's what that would look like. 
And maybe you want to change your maze color and the color of your text as well. Maybe you want your maze to be sort of a dark blue and you want your title to be a lighter blue. Maybe you want that to be turquoise. So now when you do a refresh, you'll see that your text color and your puzzle color, as well as your start and end color have now changed to whatever you select. So you can put whatever you want in here, whatever's gonna work for your book. You have full control over all the colors. You can do the front and matter pages here as well if you would like to add front and back matter pages, which if you're doing Kindle Scribe books, you probably want to use that feature so that all of your links will still work. And you also have the ability to save and load settings. So all you have to do is give it a name. How about you call this colorful rectangles? And then you hit this button, save, and now that shows up here. Let me go show you what it looks like when you do the maze ending in the middle. And you have control over how big this middle spot is by this middle width and middle height. So you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, whatever's going to work for you. And in this instance, you would probably want to go and put your start back up here. And you could completely delete the text here, and then it would look like this. Let's go ahead and set our color settings back to black. And now I'm going to show you how you can load back the settings. So we have this colorful rectangle, so now we can load these settings. And now if we do a refresh, we're back to the settings we had before. So this is really useful if you are creating a series of books and you want to make sure that you use the same settings for each of the books so that all of your puzzles look the same. So now you can save these and pull them back up next time you want to create another book in your series. Let's go back to book settings and I'm just going to show you Kindle Scribe, what that would look like. Let's put our colors back to black. Let's do a preview. And now you have the index that will take you to the automatically built puzzle list and you have the solution which will take you to the answer page and you have the back button here which would take you back to the puzzle page and once you've got everything the way you want it you can hit download and here's the final puzzle i just want to show you what the index looks like so you can click here now you have the index with all of your mazes you can click on any one of those to go to the maze, click on solution to go solution back. I'll take you back to the maze. So that's how that all works. I also want to mention that you can, of course, change these. So if you want to say puzzle list or you want to say answer or return, you can change that. You can change this text here. So if you're making puzzle books for different languages, you can put the language here. So if you want to do Spanish, you'd use the Spanish words here. So it gives you a lot of flexibility so you can make puzzles for whatever target audience that you want to make them for. So briefly, we'll just go and give you an example of the different shapes. So that was a rectangle. This is a diamond. And that looks like that. Triangle. Hexagon. and circle. And if you refer to the overview video, you'll see every single different type of maze you can create with all the different types of the inside shapes for the different mazes. The last thing that you can set is the line thickness. So if you wanted to make your lines thicker, and let's say we're doing diamond with, let's make it a smaller. And that's what that would look like. So I get you thicker lines. And that's useful if you're creating children's books, for example. And that's everything that you can do with this maze tool. And stay tuned for upcoming videos that go into more depth in each one of the shapes. If you have any questions about how to use this tool or suggestions for making it better, leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like 
and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Your journey to crafting journals, planners, logbooks, and more starts here. Get going now with a free three-day trial at abookcreator.com.